on the rest of the Canadian Football League for some lessons that he could impart on this roster, situational football, things he wants to do better. All that preparation, all that waiting for this offense for the Toronto Argonauts, it's about to end right now because the ball's on the tee to round out week number two in the Canadian Football League. Thanks for tuning in with us here on the CFL and TSN and CBS Sports Network as it's driven down to the 25-yard line. He brought across the 40, and a tackle made there just across the 45, and out comes the one and only Swag Kelly. Chad Kelly gets his first opportunity here in Toronto to be the starter. Yeah, there's his numbers as a pro. Not much to draw on right there, but what you can draw on is his background, his pedigree, his work ethic, his story. It's quite phenomenal. Needless to say, he's jacked up, ready to capitalize on all the things he's been through in the past. Ryan did what he said. He'd like to control it a little bit early on. He knows that Chad is going to be fired up and want to take some shots down the field. He's going to try and play call this into a manageable situation to get him into the rhythm of the game. He begins throwing on first down, incomplete, flipping it out to the right. Let's get a look at this Argonaut starting offense, Matty. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it starts with Chad, of course, and, but when things go well for any offense, it starts up front. It's good to have the Castro healthy and starting at right guard this season. Going to anchor that line. A.J. Ouellette did some huge things in the absence. Andrew Harris was hurt much of last season. Really a great story there in and of itself, and we'll have a lot on him. I tell you, Curly Gittins had a breakout season last year. Going to build on that, I'm sure. Where's the huddle here to oh. the top of the screen as flags come up? That was a little head start there. I want to say it's Tavares Daniels. A little excited about hitting the same route there. Missed Toronto number 80. Replay, second down. <laughs> Tom Valesi, the lead official, gets his first action tonight on the mic. Let's get a look at the Hamilton Tiger Cats starting defense. Yeah, and a couple of guys are changing colors this year. Start with Garrett Davis. He doesn't know where he wants to play in <laughs> Hamilton or Toronto. Yeah. Wherever he goes, he wins great cups. And then Chris Edwards come over, Sam Lineback, Atunde, Atunde Adelike in the back end, as good as anybody. On second and ball. Ball. They'll flip it out here to the wide side and down the right sideline and swim. Goes Cam Phillips getting his first touch of the ball game. And the season as it will be short of the sticks I gotta say mate these new uniforms of the Toronto Argonauts the black on black of the Thai Cats a little color on color matchup here you gotta love it in the QEW rivalry yeah if you got eagle eyes if you're looking at the double blue stuff to see those numbers but no problem with the Thai Cats we're, we're gonna handle it up here though for you folks that's not what you want there. It's a penalty. Start the first drive, put you back, and second and long. Have to dump it down, punt the football. Not a good feeling when you're all amped up. Maggie sends it away. Last year, Argonauts first in the CFL in punting average. And what a beautiful kick this is. Flag comes down as the ball is in the air. A 52-yard punt. Pins the Tiger Cats inside the 10-yard line. And they'll sort out the laundry in just a second. But here is Bo Levi Mitchell getting his first start in this hated rivalry. Said that his perception before he ever takes the field, he thinks that this rivalry might be a little bit grittier, nastier, more trash talk than Calgary Edmonton, which he spent the last decade plus in. Well, he's saying all the right things. Now he's got to do all the right things, Marshall. That's the thing you got to say when you change rivalries and colors. I'll tell you what, Bo, he needs to change uh, his fortunes because the last three years, it has not been going the way he wants it to go. He says it's about his teammates, and I don't think it is. I think it's about himself, and he's got to settle down and play with confidence, and uh, that'll carry over his teammates. And, you know, Matthew Shinetti said it to me earlier uh, when I was talking to him before the ball game. He said, Matty, he says, there's not a bigger first game or at second game of the season than this one for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Standing in his own end zone, Bo will hand it off inside. It is James Butler. Let's get a look at the Tiger Cats starting offense led by Bo Levi Mitchell. Yeah, he's the leader. It's got to start with him and end with him, and he understands that. Incredible. Starts up front with Revenberg, anchoring an outstanding offensive line that can give Bo Levi Mitchell the time to do what he's got to do, and he's got a tremendous back. Touch the ball. Uh, times last week for 66 yards and I think he can amp that up. He and Tim White didn't connect on but uh, four times out of ten targets and that's got to improve if they want to beat the Argos. They were backed up on first down, ran it with the heavy team in, they checked them out, extra receivers in on second down, Bo tries to get rid of it and throws it into the turf. They'll say it was close enough to number 85, Keandre Smith to avoid the grounding penalty which in the end zone could have been points on the board right away but I got a feeling they might 
might end up giving up something here anyway. Yeah, and Pager just he's just coming in hard. He's coming from depth, too, and I can't believe that Bo doesn't see this, and he just comes scot-free in Bo's lap. He can't set his feet, and he just chucks and ducks right there, and that's a tremendous start for Toronto after an offense sputtered, and now they got great field position. Potentially. It's Bailey Flint. What do you think? You're going to punt it away or it's concede to? We'll give it up here if I were the Tiger Cats. But they will kick it away. Nice spiraling boot. Belief in the defense early on in this one, forcing Chad Kelly to get into a rhythm and score points. They're already in field goal range. Great starting field position. As it will be Chad Kelly for the first time since his Great Cup heroics last November in Saskatchewan. The starting quarterback for the double blue, his second possession of the ball game. Chad Kelly played professional football for Father's Day, so here he is in the stands watching and get a look at what Chad did, of course, last year in the Great Cup. 12 snaps taken, but man, were they ever memorable. Yeah, they were. And this right here, I think it was the most memorable in second to 15, pulls it down, picks up about 18 there on a first down. He reads blitz the next play, and then he gives it to AJ, and he walks in the end zone, and that was the difference in that football game. Answered the bell for the Toronto Argonauts. Ran the K-Gun, of course, made famous by his uncle Jim with the Buffalo Bills while he was in high school in Tonawanda. He'll hand it off here to A.J. Oled gets his first touch. It's an inside run that goes for nothing as Tunde Adelke ends up with the football at the end of the play. But Chad Kelly trying to get him settled in. Interesting to see Hamilton pump Matty and force him to try and score some points here. Yeah, I didn't believe in their defense more than anything. Not so much doubting Chad Kelly, but just believing in their defense. Uh, at that first series, was any indication it, with a little help from Toronto, yeah, I'd make him earn it, but not concede it. So early on, why not get Former. these boys lathered and fired up? And they've been flying around on defense so far, looking at second and long again. As Kelly looks to his right, steps into one, flag comes up at the end of the play, but it is complete for now. As it goes for a 20-yard gain to Devaris Daniels in his seventh year in the Canadian Football League, third here in Toronto as Tom Valesi has the call. Yeah. Hold it. Toronto number 62. Yeah. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. That was a slow developing play, and so Chad needed a little extra time. And uh, when he had it, because of the hold, he fired a strike. But it is uh, the route happens up, up to his top. And the hold is right in the right tackle. He's grabbing jersey, grabbing cloth. That yeah, could have been easily on Hunter as well, Ryan Hunter. I believe it was, yeah. The second player from Bowling Green, second year player from Bowling Green, left guard. We're trying to help out the young quarterback, cheating a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Four man rush. Kelly loads it up over the top, up in the air, and it drops down incomplete. Yeah. Is That's what he'll do. Intended for Cam Phillips, and there's some of the arm strength that Ryan Dinwiddie has been so excited about. Yeah, and I, I don't know. It's more of the same. Last year we had MBT, McLeod Bethel Thompson chunking all over the yard, and this year you got another strong arm quarterback, a little wet behind the ears, only 45 uh, attempts in his career, and he's given his receiver an opportunity to go get it, and well played ball. And it'll be a 51-yard attempt here for Boris Beatty. Dexter Lawson going up high, high point it. I'm sure he's second-guessing himself. That was an athletic play stepping in for Woods at the cornerback position late this week. Nice play for a kid that didn't expect to start at the beginning of the week. And it looks like the Tiger Cats might have had some substitution challenges trying to get the right unit on the field. And so a timeout gets burned here as Jeff Reinbold back as the special, special teams coordinator this season on the sidelines for the first time in a couple of years in Hamilton. Uh, kind of like a favorite blanket, you know, get it out of the closet, make you feel good, warm, cozy all over. That's what experience does for you as a coach. You can go to a guy like that, tap into him, say, yeah, come on back, help us out. And Jeff Reinbold, here he is. And now it is John Haggerty out to punt it away. And so scoreless here early on between Hamilton and Toronto. A little change of venue for Reinbold going back to him, coming from Hawaii, where he was at the last couple of years, and coming back north of the border to Toronto. And Leandre Gallimore 
takes a knee in the end zone. First point on the board for the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, starting on the road against a team that had 19 returning starters using the silent count. You can fire up the excuse machine any way that you like, but it just straight up wasn't good enough. Bo knows that. He was pretty honest this week, guys. Well, I mean, you have to be. You, know, you, you got a new team. Expectations are squarely on your shoulders. Great cups in your backyard. Uh, you're there for a reason, and it's not to overthrow balls consistently to your number one receiver. they got to get on track for them to have some success here against the Argos. Empty it out on first down, a little underneath throw, and it's intended, it looks like, for Terry Godwin, and that will be incomplete. Uh, it's actually, it looks like it was Chris Osikusi getting a target here early on, but Bo against T.O., not yeah. bad, 12-1. and one. Yeah, he's licking his chops, you know, thinking about things things that went well in the past. You know, if that's long in the past, and now he's got to do it. And uh, like I said earlier, this is the biggest second game of the Helen Tiger Cats history early on in the season against the arch rivals as they unveil the 2022 championship banner in front of their faces going down to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Side, Toronto number 97. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Last week, and I just, uh, I agree completely with Shinetti. This is, uh, this is huge for Bo and this football team, their fan base. You don't want to dig yourself a hole early. As Thomas Costigan gets flagged there on the hard count. Bo Levi and Mitchell, Hoskin from Edmonton to Montreal via trade, comes over to Toronto now, stays in the East Division. Got a great motor, just keeps going. Gets after the defensive end here on second and medium. Bo over the middle, looks for Duke Williams, and it is complete. And will move the chains into Toronto territory for the first time here for Hamilton. That's a big target. They're happy to throw to Duke Williams. He can stay healthy, keep his head on straight. Boy, he can, he can light it up. Be a nice combination. That's what they're expecting from Duke Williams. A little dig route over the middle. Bowl's got plenty of time. Just kind of spots that one in there. Doesn't have to show up the strong arm. Feathers in there for now, for number one. That's all very long. So the Duke Williams was likely the easiest to get on the same page with here through a training camp due to his CFL experience and playing in Edmonton with Michael Riley, speaking the same language as another veteran quarterback, now retired, of course, CFL great in Riley. Hand off to James Butler in between the tackles, turns it north-south and picks up a gain of about four after the completion of 16 went to Duke Williams. Guy played himself and worked himself by into a leadership role, Sean Oakman. He's just a, he is a tree and just an outstanding individual with a crazy pass that has overcome a lot of things. Wynton McManus, just saying that name makes quarterbacks shudder across the league. He's back in the lineup and healthy this year. And this kid here, Quantez Stingers, didn't even play college ball. Talk about breaking the mold. Didn't even <laughs> play college ball. Yeah. Played an arena game or a league where they, where the fans called the plays. And the Toronto Argonauts found out about Stingers uh, through uh, John Jenkins. Uh, uh, coach of mine, a good friend. He, was, he, he called up Dusty, that's of course Jim Parker, and I tell you, they, they brought him up, looked at the film, brought him up, and Stiggers has come in, and they're happy to put him out there right now. Athletic kid. Yeah, Sean Oakman back onto his feet now, but it looks like Coulter Woodmancy, the right guard out of Guelph, is down, so we'll step away for just a moment. That's how we start, it's where you finish, and they finished on top, and they came together and found a way to get it done, largely due to that big man. Mitchell here with a second and six after the injury timeout. Four receivers to his right. That's where he starts. Comes back now. Bo looks to take off and go for the rare Mitchell jog for a first down using his feet. What? What? That, that could surpass his total from the last three years. That's I was a heck of a scramble, and he went ahead first, and so he's live bait for anybody coming in trying to secure the tackle because watch him die down here and boom. Yeah. Yeah. When take, McManus was chasing it hard from behind. Oh, yeah. You know, that is just like everybody scrambling. Want to be the first there so you can get a shot at the at the superstar. And so Bo moves the sticks with his feet. First and ten. As Hamilton goes back to the ground game. Off tackle outside. Hard yards for James Butler early on in this one with a great front from the Argonauts. Yeah. To be able to establish that. That's why they brought him over. 
because he was versatile in that BC attack last year, especially early when he was healthy, and then he got nicked up towards the end of the season, and things kind of dissipated as far as production goes, but he's healthy, and he's as good as anybody in the Canadian Football League can do it, catching the rock or toting it, and James Butler is a great addition to this football team. Argonauts prized possession and free agency for Lauren Arimolade in on the tackle there on second down and seven. Bo over the middle. Looks for Keandre Smith. And for now, they'll say it is a catch, but it is about a yard short. Right around that 30-yard line. Oh. Yeah, Bo had good patience here right to left. Can have a little drag coming across the middle, and he just puts it right on him. That ball's behind him. That going the other way because Darius Pickett is right in his hip pocket, but Bo put it on the money and set up a third and short. Diving forward in short yardage. It is Mitchell handling the short yardage responsibilities, not Matthew Schiltz. And people would think if you're watching down the stage, you know, we've got the neutral zone, which is one yard barrier that you can't cross through the defense in these short yardage situations. That's a gimme, but it's really not yep. because for some reason things get nasty in a hurry down there, and you can see why. A whole lot of mass of humanity and ugliness happening Former right there. Stamps teammates Royce Mechie coming over the top on Bowie by Mitchell. They went with Ternowski and another smaller Canadian receiver on the short yardage package. Now on first and ten, they'll bring in a couple of fullbacks and big bodies. Bo RPO finds Duke Williams inside the 15 and rolls down to the 10 with a goal to go situation after another completion to the big man wearing one. Patented little Duke celebration after the catch. Watch him body this ball. Big man. 6-3 goes about 230. Get off of me. Gotta be bringing it better than that. Nice little point fake. Paul slipped out on the other side. Duke Williams. Coach Larry Dotree, my offensive coordinator at Louisiana Tech, coached him in high school down in South Louisiana and said he's the best players ever coached in the state of Louisiana. I say a lot. Tech play of the drive here. Mitchell pumps. Nobody to look for. Throws it back across his body. Up into the end zone and intercepted. It is Stiggers. No college ball required. Welcome to the CFL, Quantez Stiggers. Nice. Don't know why Bo threw this one, and he's probably asking himself the same question. Pressure. Nobody there. I think it's a throwaway, and Stiggers surprised him. And there's Quantez Stiggers making an interception here in the CFL. In his first game is Chad Kelly back out onto the turf. Hey, there's Andrew Harris in between the tackles. The legend, Canadian running back. Yeah. So much success, and he gets an early touch. Yeah, the good thing about watching Andrew Harris and A.J. Olette play football in this run game of the Toronto Ar Argonauts is when you see first contact, just keep watching because those ball players typically don't go down. And this is what Harris has been able to do over his illustrious career. Career and started out in BC, really solidified his legacy in, in Winnipeg behind that tremendous offensive line. Came here, has some magic left, been battling through injury, and been a prominent figure in leading this football team in the right spots. Well, he's seen it here outside of Demonte Coxey is down the sideline. He goes. A little two man read there, Matty, and Chad Kelly looks like he's dialed in early with the game plan. Yeah, you know, a little. Showcase of the strong arm. Watch him just looking left the whole time. Right over the top. He reads the corner. Corner comes. Uh, George comes in and he slings it over the top. Oh, that's beautiful. That is just like throwing the heater. The number one. Let's let it fly here and show off a little bit. Get loose and he dials it in to Cox. Kelly said before the game he knows he can do it. Just wants to get on the field. Anxious to get on the field and have fun. He'll like watching that one back as he hands it off inside on first down. AJ Olette. Now Kelly's going to try to get a block, and all the Tiger Cats' defense is there. It will result in a loss of about four yards on the play for Toronto. Swarming, swarming. Carney, first play of the game, knocked one down, made it second and long. He's there as well, athletic defensive end. That they're excited about having his depth. He's starting for the... Oh, he's, he's, he's making things ugly for Olet early, and then the posse arrives. He won't get the TFL, but he certainly made the play. Interesting spot here for Dinwiddie, calling a play for Kelly on second down and 16. It looks like you're going to rush four, drop eight. 
the field. Kelly loads it up, checks it down on a little crossing route. Trying a knife upfield and unable to get there. As there's a flag well behind the play. Mason Bennett was in a wrestling match behind the play with Isaiah Cage, the left tackle. Yeah, that's fun to watch. And yeah, we'll see what that results in is Hamilton might have just bailed Toronto out if Mason Bennett took a bad penalty here. He did. He did. I mean, you got a second and 15 and take a after the play call penalty. Andrew Harris checks in. A.J. Olet back into the game as they'll substitute freely. Coaches really don't talk to them about it. They just kind of let them go and see who's fresh. And it is marching it off. Hamilton giving up a first down. Misconduct. 90 number Hamilton. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And that is the former eighth overall pick in 2020 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats out of North Dakota. He was well behind the play with Isaiah Cage. Yes. Several years back, who's up and running for the John Cornish Award. Looking at some film on that kid and straight up baller. He's balling a little too much there after the play. AJ Olet gets the touch and again in the backfield. There is Malik Carney. Yeah, we can we can just kind of eavesdrop in on Simone Lawrence talking to his teammates. Yeah, we're looking. Yeah, here's Bennett. Uh, he's he's right. I think he's right up here. No. Nope. Hang on a little bit. He's right in that area right there, folks. Yeah, they're just tussling away here. It's uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah then it gave it the old nice three, little hip. 320 pound suplex over the top. And so Kelly gets a fresh set of downs, fits it into the window. And a late hit. And a late hit as well. You heard the pop from our microphones down at field level. It was the former Argonaut, Chris Edwards, that was in there having sure the conversation was. with Chad Kelly. Just a matter of time. Yeah, he's coming right off the edge here. First down. And you're going to see him loop underneath. Actually, oh, that's just, you can't do that. I mean, 15, 20 years ago, yeah, you can do that all day long. That would have been clean hit. Nothing wrong there, but it balls out. Young quarterback, important to this franchise. Got to protect those guys. So a penalty continues the drive. They get the completion over the middle, half the distance with the illegal hit. And now Kelly will take off. Dances away from Jaguar. Davis into the end zone. Touchdown Argos. What a move by Chad Kelly. Put it on his highlight reel in game one for the double blue. Yeah. He did a lot of that at University of Mississippi. Yeah, that was sweet. I just one-on-one. -on -one. I'm better than you in space. Did that to Teammate champions from last year off the edge. I so big. You and me, Garrett. Give you something inside, take it away. And Delicate can't get there in time. And boy, that's, that's got to feel good. Chad Kelly. Nice drive, aided by a couple penalties from Hamilton, and they find the end zone. Seven plays, 80 yards in just over three minutes. Penalty aided, of course. But what a statement to finish the drive as we go down to Matthew Shinetti with more on the dueling quarterbacks here in this QEW rivalry. Yeah, it's a big statement to make, Marshall, given the fact that Chad Kelly for the last six months has been watching film of Bo Levi Mitchell because Ryan Dinwiddie was Bo Levi Mitchell's quarterback coach in Calgary for three seasons. And when I asked Kelly about it, he goes, I appreciate Bo as an athlete. And I asked Bo about it, and he said, well, Kelly's a smart kid. On the other side, we're, of course, Matty, when you're talking about this being an important second game, to want to execute for Bo because we know who Bo is and right now though in the, in the days leading up to this game and speaking to Bo Levi Mitchell about it he goes, I'm trying to manage my expectations I know what I want I know how I can play but I don't know if I'm going to fit yet and funny enough before the preseason and you don't want to hold Bo Levi Mitchell to this but it's on the record he said I might not have this Ticats playbook down at my standard until a year and a half a year and a half excuse me not a year and a half but a week
week and a half into the season. I was going to say, Tiger Cats fans don't want to hear that, Matty, as we head into a Grey Cup hosting year, yeah. but certainly trying to get onto the same page quickly. And, and, I, and I think it's a month and a half is what he's actually looking for and, and his expectations, because I talked to Matthew about that, and I've heard him make those uh, uh, statements again from Bo, and it's hard to wrap your head around that if a guy going into his 11th season has done the things Bo has done. To, you know, I think that was pretty close to the vest saying those type of things. But the fact is, uh, he's trying to find his groove, and he's been trying to find it, whether it's in a Calgary St. Peter uniform or now in a Ticat uniform with a whole lot of different pressures on his shoulders. And his teammates around him feel those pressures emulating from, from the quarterback. And this guy just took a whole lot of pressure off himself by finding the end zone. So, nice little quarterback duel here. Guy making his second start and a guy making – Second start with his second team over the course of his career. Dalmore, nice return here as it sets up Bo with a first down completion. They get the look out to Godwin. Yeah. As Bo Levi Mitchell, we know his history in the Canadian Football League, banking on some of that leadership and championship acumen, rolling into Steeltown as they, of course, are hosting the Grey Cup this season. Banking is a good word, Marshall, because uh, that is a, it is a bet. You know, he's 90, 26, and two. That's ridiculous. Best in the history of the Canadian Football League. First nine years, uh, maybe eight years in the league, it was uh, it was just a thing of beauty, and it wasn't always big numbers. He just found ways to win, and that's what he's trying to do for the Cats now. Four for seven, 45 yards, and an in on second down, short of the marker to Tim White, and asked Orlando Steinauer, Matty, about what are Hamilton actually getting with Bo Levi Mitchell? Because everybody talks about the championship acumen and all of that, but. Yeah. What are they actually getting? He said, you know what? Authenticity. He said, he's just going to be himself while he's here. That's all we really asked of him is can he come in and just be himself? And he's done that so far. Other side of that coin, Marshall is he was trying to be himself in Calgary and lost his job to Jake Mayer and finds himself on the open market. And he was the first domino to fall here in Hamilton. Not a, good, not a bad one to pick up at all. And they're banking on his future, like he said. Sending it away are the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Last high, beautiful kick that time from Bailey Flint. So it drops down after 51 yards in the air, and the coverage unit is right there on the spot. As Bailey felt it looked like he was in the middle of it. And hey, look, it's a Hamilton Toronto game. There's players going through the bench. <laughs> right? I mean, what is stir the pot even more? Put both teams on the same side of the football field, let them go at it. Happens every time. Never gets old watching a player from Toronto here at Bimo Field make their way back to the sideline to our broadcast booth left as Chad Kelly comes out after the touchdown drive successfully. Toronto on the board with a touchdown in his first quarter as a starting quarterback of the Argonauts. Not sure how they did it, but Hamilton seems to have flipped the field. Maybe Flint had something to do with that with that tremendous punt, but now the, now it's the first time we've seen Chad Kelly backed up in his own end. Drifting on the lake side of BMO Field. This oh. completion is no more. Knocked away. Was about to say it was thrown in behind the intended tight Argonauts receiver. As it looks like it was JV and Elliott coming over. Talk about Stan Peters making their way to Hamilton. Defensive back pickup makes the play. And the first quarter ends the way it should between Hamilton and Toronto. A big hit. Nothing. Argonauts lead on the Chad Kelly rushed quarter here on a Sunday in week two. It is the Tiger Cats trailing by eight against the Toronto Argonauts. It's Bully by Mitchell. The interception going the other direction. Chad Kelly makes the play. They're not playing head to head, Matty. We know this about quarterbacks, but it is great to be able to watch one of the guys who's been kind of the stand in this league for about a decade and the newcomer in Toronto putting his stamp on it right away. We both played the position and we always got excited playing against a quality quarterback always. in a matchup, no matter who was you want to play your best both these guys want to do that but it's certainly more than that you've got to handle your own business and take care of your own huddle and, and uh, like you said Marshall it's top end of this uh, end of this quarter and fittingly it was a smash mouth football Elliot laying down some wood so Chad Kelly starts the second quarter with a second and ten after that big hit and now it is a sack in the backfield, Chris Edwards does get home after 
taking the unnecessary roughness late hit on the quarterback. And of course, Edwards goes right towards his old teammates in Toronto, signing in free agency with Hamilton. And Simone Lawrence alongside he's, he's Chris right Edwards running 24. Oh, you know this feels good. Boys, coach, just bring me, man. Cut me loose. Cut me loose. Let me go get some. He got some, boy. He's a passionate football player. Sometimes it spills over in the wrong ways, but Chris Edwards, make no doubt about it, he can play some football. Hunt drops down to Gallimore, handling the return responsibilities. With Woods out of the lineup today, a game-time decision, 48-yard punt, and already in plus territory after the Chris Edwards sack to end the Argonauts drive. Tim White comes out onto the field for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Said this year he wanted to add a little bit more to his game. The challenge of raising his level of play is what's inspiring him in 2023. He wants to get better at tracking the football and explosiveness. He wants to be the big play guy in this league. How do you get that done? How do you get that done? You know, you got to play the game. You got to work, obviously, in the offseason on the explosion, your quickness. And he had plenty of that to begin with, so it's fun to watch as well. Side to James Butler once again sticking with his average in around five six yards but Tim White last season had himself a big big year of course as he was able to get into the end zone plenty of times and unfortunately last year ended with him being one of the only people they were willing to target by the time they got to the Eastern semifinal in Montreal. A lot of guys were broke you know and as Stephen Dunbar he ends up in Edmonton and Poppy White's no longer on the roster and brought in uh, Duke Williams for that reason takes some hit off of number 12. Pressure on here from the Argonauts. Mitchell gets it out and it is complete over the middle as Mitchell ends up on his backside and Keandre Smith has a first down on a second down conversion. Yeah last week four catches 39 yards involved in the offense but an offense that sputtered against the Bombers defense and Keandre he's another up and comer boy he just I saw him warming up with Bo before the ball game and well, just little things like that, playing pitch and catch with the quarterback, getting on the same page, just having fun, getting in a routine. It's all about that sometimes, getting to know one another. And Keandre's on to a good start with his veteran quarterback, Bo Levi. Joel Figueroa lost his shoe, it looks like. That's and a big so shoe, too. He, he, <laughs> it's like, he better put that thing down. He's going to get tired walking the sidelines. And so he'll walk it off to the sideline. They'll substitute in here. and mix and match the personnel group. It was a long discussion as Keandre Smith comes back out onto the field that they had pregame as they were going through their warm-ups of Keandre Smith and Bo Levi Mitchell. It looked like they were trying to figure out a play they had just run in kind of their walkthrough period of warm-ups, and then Tommy Condell got called over. He talked about it with them. I mean, it was a real wow. conference call of them trying to sort through some different things. Yeah, so. I think there's quite a bit of that going on in the Canadian Football League. You know, certainly a lot of people involved in play calling sometimes is not necessarily the best thing that could happen, but they had plenty of time to figure this one out. Brandon Revenberg just took over at left tackle on the inside run on first and 10 with Figueroa, the starting left tackle to the sideline, losing his shoe. It looked like Revenberg, the Canadian veteran at a Grand Valley State, just <laughs> stepped into the huddle and reorganized it himself. Said, listen, yeah. I'm the elder statesman here. That's it. You go there, I go here as Dayton Black, the sixth overall pick, moves into left guard. That's right. He's backing up. And boy, he's, 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 this game's got his full attention now. Revy's like, ah, this old hat. I got it. He'll tell everybody what to do up there in that old line. That's how good he is. Third overall pick back in 2016 has been a mainstay in this black and gold lineup as Mitchell stares down second down and nine from the 29 of the Argonauts. Pressure on screen, gets it out. Butler's got it, turns it up, crosses the 20-yard line, cuts back inside the 15, and he'll be wrapped up at the 10-yard line. Tommy Condell, offensive coordinator, dials it up. Yeah, this is beautiful. This play call, you know, they typically uh, yeah, replace where they came from is exactly what they had dialed in for second and nine. As two linebackers, you can see them coming right through here. They come off the edge and come in this gap, and they slide Butler out here. A little screen. Nice play call. They go from there, get a couple big boys out in front. Butler just finds a little crease, and bam. Quick 16, 17 yards for you, just like that. It looks like they're working to tape up the ankle of Joel Figueroa on the sideline. So Revenberg stays at left tackle. And the 2023 first round pick of the Ticats stays in at left guard. They'll try to run it. James Butler cuts back to the five, dives to the end zone. 
down. Touchdown, Tiger Cats. That's huge. That's what Butler did last year so well for the BC Lions. He got that organization and Nathan Rourke in his first 10 games anyways uh, just lit on fire with those two guys. And James Butler went healthy. Like I said, he's as good as anybody in the league. And watch the cutback. Defensive ends kind of caught in no man's land. Bo takes his fake, carries it out as he should. I'd let him take the ball 24-7 to keep my eyes on James Butler. Anyway, Bud had enough, enough room to maneuver and find the end zone with a little want to. Go for two here, trailing by two. They'll go back to Butler in Toronto's front. Says no chance as they tried to run it away from the strength. And in the backfield, Falarin Arimalade. One of a host of Argonauts making the stop, but no chance of bringing down James Butler as he trucks his way into the end zone. Hamilton sees him get his second of the season. That guy in space, good luck with that. Finds the end zone. Take a look at it after this kick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Eight touches already in this ball game. I love that for Hamilton. Yeah, he's got 11 carries in week one. Many of them coming late in the game. Is a big kick here. We'll drive back the Argonauts as they return it out across the 15-yard line, <laughs> trying to recreate the magic of Janarian Grant from Friday night in that Winnipeg Saskatchewan matchup. But Hamilton's coverage unit right there on the spot. Yeah, they're gonna add, add into the box here. Gonna bring Winton and then coming off the edge, and he's gonna be he's gonna be all alone. In space. Sorry, folks. Uh, just trying to get this kick started. Yeah, he's going to be space all by himself. Boom. He may, he's in no man's land. He didn't have bow, didn't have the back. Now he's got to regroup, and it's too late. Kelly takes the snap, looks over the top, feeds this one out to the wide side. All the time in the world that time for Curly Gittins Jr. Getting yeah, yeah. his grab. Things rolling for 19 in his fourth year at Wilfrid Laurier. Here we go, here we go. All along. Just strong arms it. It's actually an easier throw now. You can see Kelly, yeah, it's true, with the hash marks being moved in 2022, but you can see Kelly working his way through progressions here, which is encouraging for Toronto. They go play action. This time zips it into the hole once again. Devaris Daniels complete, and the arm strength is on display right now as we get a look at Curly Gittins Jr. and Canadian receivers last year. He had 135 targets in 2022, Matt. He was sixth in the CFL, but he had the highest completion percentage of any of the top 15 targeted guys in the league last year. And there, folks, is a perfect example why we love Marshall Ferguson. Because he's just a font when it comes to numbers. And uh, he can spit stuff like that out, the drop of a hat. And this guy simply produced those numbers last year. Jay We're excited to see him do it again this year. All right, between the tackles once again, a great run between the tackles. But Giddens Jr., you mentioned it earlier, Matt, this was his breakout season in 2022. Didn't end the way he won in the Great Cup without a couple of catches, but man, did he ever have a year. I'll, ta I'll take that ring any day, right, and work on the catches, you know, for this year. But, well, he, uh, he's special. He's a special receiver. And sometimes, you know, it just takes, takes these young guys just a couple years to gain some confidence in their skill set and realize what they have to work on, play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. He did that and bang, breakout year. Curly Gittin says hello to the CFL. Second down. Hamilton goes after AJ Olet. He's gonna be close to getting the first down marker here. I'm right on it, Marshall. He's he has first down. Interesting to hear Ryan Dinwiddie, head coach of the Argonauts, saying to us this week that when they had trouble against Hamilton last year, it was because Hamilton wasn't respecting their run game. They were playing with a five-man box and couldn't run against them. Yeah. And so he said, we've got to make them respect the box, bring a sixth defender down, and be able to open up some throwing lanes for Chad Kelly early. Not rocket science, you know. He's just count numbers. And, and, and football is often all numbers, you know. Numbers out, way into the field, you go to the boundary. Yeah, and numbers are not right for you in the box, then you spread it out. And 
they put more numbers in the box and you can't handle it, then you got to freaking throw the football. It's, nope. it's not that hard. And it will be a first down for you, Toronto. It. You were on it. I'm telling you. Laser right there. Flight to Vancouver, Second. red eye back, early morning, <laughs> party plaza, LL Cool J. It didn't matter. Hey. Matty Dunningham right there on the line. That's all on Omar Dolman, man, <laughs> spreading the love, bringing the panel out there. We had a good time out on the West Coast. and. Congratulations for the BC Lions, that whole organization, top to bottom. Special shout out to McKenzie working her tail off out there for the Lions, doing everything. As AJ Olette spins off the tackle by Malik Carney, cuts it back, and Olette getting into a rhythm here as he's getting the bulk of the carries. Tip, we we're so busy out there, Marshall. That, that's a heck of a run, best run of the year for AJ Olette. Let's get another look at that. He just gets skinny right there. He says, get off of me, Malik. Bring it better than that. I've been in the ring this offseason throwing down some big boys. And uh, yeah, look at him. He, he is the liver king right there. Our version of the liver king, anyways. Got the two tone hair going. Got the mullet happening. The Four here. Beard. Out of Ohio. It's Coxie this time breaking across the 20 yard line. And Demonte Coxie is down at the 10. A 22 yard gain, and the field is slanted significantly downhill for the Argonauts' offense here in the second quarter. Second year from Memphis. Catch one over the middle and traffic just a little bit. Nice spotted ball by Kelly. We talk about his strong arm, but he's got to be accurate and on time. Elliott just a little late on his clothes, gave, gave Coxie just enough room to shed him right here. Off to the races. Good looking drive by Toronto in response. A lot of tackles being made in the secondary right now as Kelly fakes the inside jet, rolls to his right, moving. It'll go into the end zone incomplete. And Andrew Harris came back to get a block on Carney, which he wasn't happy about, letting Tom Valesi know that the crackback block. I like the play call. There's though. too much traffic out there. Too much traffic out there, and there's just. And it got cloudy in a hurry if you not have it right away. Andrew doesn't have anybody out flanked. He got three receive he got three defenders on two receivers, and that's not a bad play there at the end of the day. Well, we get to find out right now on second down from the 10-yard line. What's Chad Kelly's favorite gotta get to the end zone play? First chance to see this in his time in Toronto. I'd say one on one up top. Five to wide. Him. Pressure on, tries to break out of the pocket. A flag is down, and so is Chad Kelly. As oh, we know who that is. Mohamed Diallo bringing him down, but we'll deal with the flag as well. I wonder if he's gonna do the flop. Diallo flop. Look at Isaiah Cage there. Yeah, yeah, look at that. It, it like, look, what are we having for dinner? It's like, <laughs> it's like walking the kitchen. We have two flags on the play. Holding. Hamilton 66. Oh. Sorry, Toronto 66. Oh, there you go. Major foul, roughing the quarterback, face mask, Hamilton. We'll go up five yards, automatic oh. first down. There we go. As we, Mitiello got the hands up in on Kelly as he brought him down. Otherwise, this thing might have been over. Yeah, so there's Gage right there. He He's going to get one hold. And face mask, there's, well, there's the hold. And there's a face mask. So Diallo gets a face mask with the quarterback because he's slinging him around the yard. Well, handed off inside. Olette bouncing off tacklers, reaches the football out, and comes up just a yard shy as Casey Sales came in to finish him off. And this is going to be second and goal from the one, and it will come to heavies. Dylan Giffen off the sideline, and Gregor McKellar as well, the first round pick in 2022 out of St. FX. Boy, just. Yeah, just felt it, you know, it was like sniffing the goal line, you know, just breaking tackles, wanting it, you know, reaching for it, and that's what you get when you hand the ball off to him. They'll take out Chad Kelly here in short yardage. They go sneak, it's with the quarterback Cameron Dukes, first-year CFLer. Reach and ride. Takes the snap, rides over the top, tries to jump, and the Hamilton front right there to stack him up. No signal yet. hunting for a hole on the left side and then he kind of he, he went airborne got popped back by Ted Laurent 21 in Simone there too Lawrence. go figure right right oh that's Simone and Ted well that's a wall but he goes airborne bump not there doesn't get it there it's 
good call by the officials. Remember, they got a yard. They got to get that yard up every time, folks. Third and goal. Kelly back in the ball game. Drives his feet to the left. His second rushing touchdown of the ball game. I don't think any other quarterback gets that, but Chad Kelly with the strong lower half. Well, he wanted that one. Not going to be denied here. Second effort with his own line. Finds the end zone. Big response drive by the Toronto Argonauts, aided by a couple penalties. He stopped there. He keeps driving. Oh, that's on him. They still had not tackled him. Curly's out there putting his man down on the ground. 11 plays, 93 yards in 541. And Toronto reestablishes their offensive control that we've seen here in the first half with Chad Kelly introducing himself to the BMO Field faithful on the night where they celebrate the Grey Cup Championship of 2022. Speedy knocks it through as the Great Cup champion flags continue to wave in the wind. And in the all new double blue, the 12's in the end zone again. Toronto leads 15. -10. And uh, the timing wasn't there and it was incomplete out of bounds. And it was cloudy over there, too. Because the next play was AJ Olette in the middle run. So to me, I guarantee he's looking at that pass play trying to correct that. Hamilton returns this one. 14-yard line, Gallimore finds a hole on the right-hand side and gets it out to the 40. He's done that a couple times already in this ball game. Hamilton, good starting field position, and they'd like to get back on the board, trying to play Catherine. No, it's awesome. Matthew would be great that was awesome. on a golf course, just following people around. Well, you sound a pretty good right there, too. Well, Levi Mitchell, first and 10 from his own 40. And on the sidelines for a little while after that second touchdown drive of the Argonauts. Looks over the top in a one-handed grab. The spider web was out that time for Terry Godwin the second. Check it out. Not to say in this little day coming from right to left. Got an ISO too on. Give it to us, Terry. Fearless. It. Moving the sticks. Terry got it. So much hype coming out of Georgia. Got to Hamilton last year. They wanted to play him a little bit more. Never really got the chance down the stretch. Here he is in 2023. As they flip it out on first down to James Butler. I love that. What do, you, what do you think was better? That one from Terry Godwin or last year when Stephen Dunbar was playing against Ottawa? About week six, huge one-handed grab down the sideline as well. I mean, that, those are two world-class catches right there. And Terry Godwin's on the board with the catch of the year as a stick. I'm going to last year because I think this is fairly routine for him. That's routine? That's routine. That, hey, it was double cut. You have to make the routine plays routinely in the, in the, in the, in the top place look routine. That's what he did right there. Slow mo shot when he was all spread out, looked like Jordan going to the hole. Uh -oh. Over the middle into the hole. Speaking of which, Duke Williams makes the grab. <laughs> With a little Selly, too. That was sweet. Got to look at that Selly one more time. But Bo just threads this into traffic. Bo Levi Mitchell trusting his receivers, getting on the same page here as they start to work their way towards halftime. We've hit the three-minute warning. Godwin, one hand, the timing throw, feathering it in. Duke Williams makes the grab, and Hamilton's got something going on. I was going to sit here and go. Chad, Don't let go. Chad Kelly the entire Come time, on, and then Milk brings out go. one of his bands. But then they said because Don't the game go. is a tug of war. Oh. Nails, you're never going to win. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't hurt Coach. Always oh, uphill battle there for Naylor on the panel. As you see. A celebration for Argos fans of the 2022 Grey Cup continuing. The banner out, the first 10,000 fans in attendance. Replica rings, boldly by Mitchell and the Tiger Cats. Trying to spoil the party here to end the first half on first down. We're running between the tackles and just coming out of the break there, man. That whole commercial break, boldly by Mitchell in the huddle talking to his guys. Chirping, getting on the same page, talking to him, letting him know what he's thinking, what he wants him to do, communicating. He just don't get enough of that time when the. 
situations like that. He took full advantage of it and was and it was commanding that huddle the whole time, talking, getting on the same page with his teammates. He knows how important this moment is as we roll inside two minutes remaining in the first half. Trailing by nine. Mitchell will send Butler out to the flats, loads it up, looks over the top, into trouble, into coverage. His second interception of the first half against Toronto. And it's Deshaun Amos making the pick. Yeah, six of seven to that point, make it six of eight. Now a second interception in the red zone. And uh, that one stinks. Taking points off the board for sure. And he was picking up where he left off in 2022. Yes. Four knockdowns, four interceptions. Straight to go see friends and family. And reward them with a the game ball. Yeah. This ball never had a chance at the top of the screen just to go around outside and release and just watch it come over the top. And uh, this, this play never had a chance. You've got it's cloudy. And this cut coverage takes an outside release. Deep outside defender says, are you kidding me? I'm, I'll take that all day long. And McFadden's underneath. Amos is over the top. Cut coverage to the boundary and both feeds him an interception. Kelly's got all day. Now he loads it up. Look at the arm strength. Exactly what Kelly does. Just zips it. Little quick release. Money. Just beautiful. Dropped it in. As you practice it 24 7. Nice little move by Coxie, too. Now he's on his horse, knowing that his strong arm quarterbacks give him a chance. He goes and takes it. And for everything that McLeod Bethel Thompson gave the Toronto Argonauts last year, the one thing they were lacking in was the deep ball accuracy. Well, Welcome to the Chad Kelly era here in Toronto as he takes a deep one over the top to Coxie. Now he looks in between coverage. That one nearly intercepted, knocked away, looking for Curly Kittens Jr. It was Richard Leonard, the veteran boundary half or a field halfback, knocking it away. Yeah, he was playing that ball the whole way in that route. And uh, he was just trying to figure out a way how he could undercut this, trying to get in front of Curly Gittens. And uh, he did a nice job coming over the top, sticking his left arm across the body, not interfering with him before the ball got there. Heads up play by Leonard. But I love in the play before that how he's able to climb the pocket, and there was a nice little space there for Kelly to step up and sling the rock. Folks, he's got four catches for 116 yards already. This time to the outside, they go back to him. His fifth catch of the ball game, refusing to go down to the turf. And Coxie certainly looks like he's going to be a player in this Toronto offense early. Well, um, he's on the same page with his young quarterback, and the strong arm comes into play here in the wide side out. And watch how far he's got to throw this. Coxie's top of your screen. And Chaz got to sling it out there. Much easier throw these days, moving the hash marks from 17 to 9 yards apart. And he just sticks it on him right here. Gives him a chance to make something happen after the catch. So it's a first and goal. For the Argonauts, A.J. Olet gets the touch inside the five, driving the legs. And the Hamilton defense will finally bring him down. Big Teddy Laurent yeah. is the one that holds on for dear life as 34 claps his hands. He was chugging towards the goal line once again, and the heavies are in for Toronto. Yeah, and you know, he's wanting to get in that end zone. He's smelling it again. He got him close, knocking on the door, taking full advantage of a turnover here by the Hamilton Tiger Cats, second by Bo Levi Mitchell, and Toronto's wanting to take full advantage going in the locker room at half. Kelly stays in the huddle, checks the play clock. It rolls down to 11 seconds here as they get set to break the huddle. Laurent stares it down. His former teammate, Darius Sirocco, drafted by the Tiger Cats, sixth overall, lines up across from him in short yardage. Three, why not? A trifecta of rushing touchdowns for Chad Kelly in his Argonauts debut. Wow. If you had him in fantasy, <clears throat> our producer, our director, and everybody else back there, you know, you're pretty happy with the situation, how it's unfolding for the Argonauts. AJ's taking him to the doorstep, and Kelly's putting him in the end zone on a regular basis. Big boy's just churning it out for him, finding a soft spot on the edge, beating Elliott with his strength. Tunday, a delicate coming off the edge as well. No, no match for Chad Kelly. He's been 
position. Made his way through progressions, thrown with accuracy, showing us the arm strength, flat-footed, moving around, getting out in space off the run game. I'm a fan of the stands. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm paying, I'm paying more for this. I want to see this more often. This is, this is good stuff by the young quarterback saying hello to the Toronto and the fan base. He actually told me this week that he was doing high-intensity interval training throughout the offseason, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Oh, I thought he was like two days on, two days off. No. <laughs> That's my type of interval training. 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, and you just go and go and go and go and go. And he said he was using it to build mental strength. When you don't want to go anymore, the bell goes off. You have no choice. Anybody who's ever done a hit class knows when the bell goes off, it's, it takes mental fortitude to turn around and keep going. He went ahead and that all offseason. He said, I know there's going to be adversity, but I just know I have to be able to weather it for this team. Well, the adversity right now has been, can JV and Elliott hang on to his hips long enough to keep him out of the end zone? <laughs> yeah. Not going to happen on that play. Argonauts looking pretty good here in the first half. See if Bo can figure it out. Could have worked outside. He's going to have a few plays here. I don't know if he's taking it house, trying to push one deep again, but may get a good return. No Lawrence Woods in the lineup. For the Hamilton Tiger Cats, one of the most dangerous receivers or returners in the league. We got Dexter Lawson Jr. from Appalachian State back there. As Hamilton will get back possession. A huge flipping of the field on the Alamore. Demonte Coxey catch down the sideline for 50 plus. And it went from, ah, there's a couple of minutes remaining here, and Bo Levi Mitchell and the Tiger Cats might be able to score to interception, flip the field, third rushing touchdown, and now Bo comes out and he's down 16 points. It's a thing of beauty. It's exactly the way you draw it up. You don't want to turn the ball over give it to me. We're hot right now. We're starting to believe, and that's huge for a football team. Out of the gate, had a bye week the first week of the season. Now they got Hamilton coming over here, staying from handoff as Hamilton just wants to get to the locker room right now. It, it certainly hasn't unfolded the same way, Matty, but that week one loss against Winnipeg, it was turnovers and it was the opposing quarterback just making more plays than Hamilton's offense. Zach Kalaros was outstanding in that game on Friday Night Football of week one and here on a Sunday to wrap up week two, Hamilton has a very similar deficit as they run the rock to get it to halftime. Nobody's ever won a game at 30 minutes of play. Yep. Hamilton's going to go in there try to regroup. And they did a great job of regrouping last week, which is what they'll have to do if they want to fight back in this one and make it a ball game. As it is, Chad Kelly, the highlight. He feels like a guy that's been waiting around several years for an opportunity to get himself a start in professional football. He can barely put sentences together with his interview before the game. I think he's going to be a little more relaxed. Let's, 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 let's listen in and see what shenanigans he's got with the young quarterback, Chad Kelly. Yeah, Kelly making his way over to Matthew now. Is, uh, maybe he'll have uh, a little bit more to say. after an epic party in Hamilton at the end of November. Certainly a long way for the Tiger Cats to go to have an yeah. opportunity to get into that thing, Matty, well, because I, Toronto's trying to stick him at 0-2 right now early in the season. I think that that ad for the Grey Cup this year in Hamilton was made before the Canadian Open last week. Nick Taylor, that was, that's got to be a front runner for Canadian sporting event of the year. That was crazy no doubt. to watch that. Wind swirling around here in BMO Field as the Hamilton Tiger Cats will get possession of the football first, trailing by 16. Marshall Ferguson, Matt Dunnigan, Matthew Shinetti down at field level for us here to wrap up week two in the CFL as a return by Gallimore breaks towards the field. Trying to outrun the angles and jumps right into the tackler as he crosses the 40. But once again, the kick return game of the Hamilton Tiger Cats gets them out in good field position. Here's Bo Levi Mitchell's first half, specifically yep. the two interceptions in the end zone. Really the difference right now. Pressure in his face, thinks he's throwing this away. Stiggers falls back underneath it, makes an athletic play. Here throws into coverage, that's pressure. Never read the cut corner. Amos was over the top, held the free safety was over there too. His three defenders over the top. And didn't have time to see it clearly and obviously throwing into coverage got his team hurt. Toronto made, made hay, right? They, they, 
get converted on that. Oh, look at that. Nearly intercepted. Going back the other direction. There's Pickett. Pickett's Just undercut it. Was going to take it to the house, make life even more miserable for 19 in the health of Tiger Cats. Social media in the offseason. Yeah, he just he's just he's running the route for him. He sees it. Bo's taking him there. He says, okay, I'll go. I'll trust your eyes. <laughs> I should have been to the house. I know Darius. Second year. Uh, he's second guessing that one. Yeah. Coming over in free agency from Montreal, where he was a great player for that last year. Three-man rush underneath. It's Turnowski making the grab. There he is again. UCLA, as you mentioned, Marshall coming over from Montreal, where he was making all kinds of plays. Toronto said, "I'll take some of that." And you can see why. Look at that form tackle, beautiful. That looked like that looked like Davis on Milt. <laughs> I, one, I've never seen Milt hit that way. I've never seen Davis hit that high. And uh, to have it on tape in slow motion is special. I was afraid that Javon Holmes down was going to get into the fray last night. 51-yard punt from Hamilton. And it's wrapped up just outside the 15-yard line as Chad Kelly takes to the field. And we get a look at his first half exploits. It wasn't just the quarterback sneaks and the rushing touchdown. He made some great reads to draw. Oh, oh. Just sticking it in the middle of a dig route here. Just climbing a pocket, slings it over the top of Coxie, and well, on the money. And then here, he's just using his big body, his off-season training, paying off for him right there, dragging a couple of tie cat defenders in the end zone. Had a nice move on Ja'Gary Davis, perennial all-star. Left him hanging in the dust. Found the end zone. Just tremendous first 30 minutes of football for the Argonauts and their fans. So with the jet sweep here on first down, as they get the football in the hands of Curly Gittins Jr. And a flag comes up at the end of the play. As Gittins Jr. tried to turn the corner as he adds another reception on the little jet. I, I, I didn't think he had the corner. And then he little stutter step, and then he took off and showed us a little burst right there. And Leonard had to come up and corral him. In. Illegal block. Toronto number 18. Half distance to the goal. Repeat Set. first down. And the former second overall pick out of Virginia, Dijon Brissett, gets the flag at the very end of this one. Yeah, it's just at the very end. He's trying to work. He's just at the top of your screen. He's at the top of your screen. Argonaut coming right there. He didn't even do anything. Yeah, yeah. That's second look at that. I didn't see much there, but he used to say we're playing ball. Tangled up. This one skips into the turf as Chris Edwards gives a nice little shot at the end of the play to Curly Gittins Jr. And walks away from it. Was told at halftime, by the way, that uh, Chris Edwards, after he made the, the sack in the first half, ran past the Argos bench and yelled, this is my city. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, I like the He's confidence. perfect for but this he's matchup. Chirp he's chirping at their, at their sidelines right now after that play. He, he's a baller, and he plays with a lot of passion and enthusiasm. Sometimes it's just hard to corral all that. So after the penalty for the illegal block, Tangling of the toes with Dijon Brissett taking that. And then the incompletion. Here comes second and 19 for Kelly. Quarterback draw. Up the middle, Mohamed Diallo. Defensive tackle will wrap him up. Former 19th overall pick. Design quarterback draw the way. Pick up eight or nine, maybe even 10. The young guy, 28 years old, you don't think, you know, he's not going to break. Let's run him up in there. Another quarterback? Maybe Zach Kalas, Bo Levi Mitchell. Ain't gonna happen. Get a look at Jonathan Kongbo there being traded over from the BC Lions, essentially negating the trade uh, capital that was switched around when Dane Evans went to the BC Lions in the offseason. He's in the defensive end rotation and playing plenty on specials as Gallimore's driven back here by Haggerty. Another beautiful kick. And he tries to make it back across the field and finally is popped again. It's a Darius Pickett, and the fans will love that after a big tailgate day here in the big smoke. Hamilton fans making their way down the QEW. Argos fans getting those replica rings, celebrating the Great Cup trophy. And right now, when the weekend, you're doing stuff, you know, relaxing a little bit. 
to the point he just can't pronounce his name. Well, Levi Mitchell would love to end the weekend with a victory here at BMO Field. Toronto defense feeding off their offense and success in the first half. And for Levi Mitchell throwing into coverage. They're playing well. And Mitchell after the inside run for a gain of four. Working with this offensive line. And Corey Mays, defensive coordinator, right now only giving up six points. Touchdown early in the game. Went for two, couldn't get it. Talking to his cousin yesterday in Vancouver. Mitchell with a four-man rush, pressure's on, wrapped up, and down he goes. In the backfield, Falaran Orimilade. Welcome to the double blue. That's right. Big time off-season acquisition. A lot of people saw that and said, hmm, interesting. The defense as good as Toronto's just got better. Yeah, he's right here standing up, folks. Could watch him do his thing. Second and long. Mm. That figure roll. Space and his speed takes over every time. As the Argonauts get possession back, a 47 yard punt. Tackle made on the play by Carthel Flowers Lloyd. Look at the sack here, dipping around the edge. Orimilade celebrates in double blue with a 16 point advantage. I feel bad for Usama Mushtaba, the strength and conditioning coordinator there. He, I think he had to, to play the heel. Well, against AJ. Yeah, kind of like Milt yesterday with Davis. <laughs> Chad Kelly flips it out. Here goes Olette on the edge, being tracked down by Casey Sales. Tunde Adelike makes the play. But the Argo is mixing and matching their calls. And in this system, Chad Kelly told me this week that he loves the variety that Ryan Dinwiddie will call in for him. He says, we've got one of everything in this offense. Yeah, you see there, you know, fake the ISO inside, and they, and they flip it to him on the edge, and they get a man predominantly that runs in between the tackles as good as anybody in the league including his counterpart, Andrew Harris. He's on the edge and showing his strength out there and ability in his open space. There's a lot to love about A.J. Olette, and uh, he's just a fun football player. To Body language on Kelly breaking the huddle there, confident. Looks like he wants to load it up. He thought about it, decides to check it down underneath. What a catch. Is it caught by Coxie? That's a tough one. Might was be his catch. toughest of the day, but he hauls it in. Couple yards short. As Dave Naylor was talking at halftime about decisions not made that are bad ones, and this one a nice clean decision, even though he wanted to go over the top. Yeah, nobody was open there. Bad things were going to happen, and he did the right thing, and he spotted the ball beautifully. And Coxie just comes up with a circus catch, tightly contested. Ball was thrown right on the money, where only he could catch it, and you know they. Easily could have flipped the game there if he made a poor decision, but he made the right decision. Extended the play, spotted the ball to Coxie. Now they're punting and relying on the rest of the football team to do their thing. And the cover teams, and Haggerty been amazing on punting the football and the coverage. On. Yeah, Mickey Donovan's special teams unit of the Toronto Argonauts. Entire coaching staff back here from the Great Cup Championship. As Gallimore retreats. This kick bounces inside the 10, picks it up, and what a kick again by Haggerty. 63 yards, no return, as Haggerty celebrates with the bench, backed up deep in his own end here on first down after the great 63-yard punt by John Haggerty. He's feeling it today, he is. Marshall. Well, he's flipped the field position a couple times with great coverage units by the Toronto football team. There's a look at him, and he was celebrating big time after that punt, and why not, man? He nailed it, beautifully placed, and puts Helms in another tough spot. He's having a day. It's good to see. Oftentimes, those guys don't get enough love. He's got those Matt Dunnigan frosted blonde tips from back Yeah, there. yeah, you know it. Back in the day, that was working for me, Marshall. <laughs> you wouldn't know anything about that with that red hair of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell, four receivers to his right on second down and seven. On a four-man rush, there you go. clears oh, the rush, oh, looks downfield, trying to find someone, and he does. It's Duke Williams, and ooh, Toronto might be lucky that Tyler Ternowski wasn't within the vision of Bo Levi Mitchell there. Wow. Down that sideline, there was a chance. I thought for sure 19 was going to watch him escape to his right. Gets flushed. Whoop, nice little move there. I thought he was going to take it right there. 
Oh, yeah, down the rail shot. He's wide slit. He was locked on, just looking for help, right? Oh, there he is. Give it to him. Missed the rail shot. Regardless, moves the chains, That's gets huge. them out of their own end, out to the 30. As Butler gets the handoff, drives the legs, and he'll get a first down on first down with the running game. Hamilton has so often been using a variety of different backs all over the place the last five, six years. Right now, it's James Butler all day. Yeah. And I think he's really pleased that that's the case. He knows that he's going to get those touches. Last week, 11 for 66 yards. And he's touching more than that today, and we're just starting halfway through the third quarter. Look at that. Johnny rushing all over, 15 touches, 59 yards. Again, they go four receivers. Outside, big hit. <laughs> Flying in from the corner, Tavares McFadden out of Florida State. Gives Tim White a pop, and White gets up and has something to say to Turnowski, who missed his block on the lanky corner from the Argonauts. Yeah, that one's smart, you know. And you're going to pop off. You know, it's just going to happen. Sticks it out there and beats him inside. <laughs> My goodness. It's like locked on target. You can see it coming from up here. And then, bam! Get yourself 2 0. Lowered the shoulder. That's a clean hit. Didn't go ahead, Hunt. Lowered the shoulder. Put it right in the chest. Big time play. Well, on second and 13, flags come up before this snap could ever get going. And Mitchell's talking right now to David Beard. Going back to that play, Tim White gets he's a little angry because this stuff smarts. He gets a little upset because he's not getting a lot of help, and he's telling him about it. Yeah, he, he, wanted, he wanted to throw his own punch. Yeah, it's just teamwork, right? You can't do it by yourself. These plays are designed for everybody to do the jobs, and when, when somebody does it, that stuff happens. Yeah, and Tim White. Frustrated after his yeah, well, sensational you know year. You know, Tim being a leader on that football team, I know that's smart, but take that on the sidelines, not in the middle of the football field for all to see. Second down and 18. Looks like a three-man rush here from the Argonauts. Mitchell underneath. Terry Godwin, and he slips down to the turf. How about that? McFadden making that play. Tronowski misses it. McFadden, McFadden says, yes, thank you very much. And now it's punting the football right there. Hamilton had something going. Good defensive play by McFadden, taking advantage of Tronowski missing a block. And Tim White still hot under the collar, and as he should be. But Hamilton basically got the ball out of their own end. Should flip the field here. Matchups here in Toronto ago that Brandon Banks was on the sideline as the big punt gets covered well down the field. Some pushing and shoving between Argonauts teammates last year on the sidelines, and now it's Hamilton trying to sort it out here at BMO Field. The big hit by McFadden. The defense making plays and the offense in control. Seavers oh, yeah. trying to figure this thing yeah, out on are. the sidelines after Ternowski. John is talking to him, saying yeah. that stuff happens, man. AJ Olette says thank you very much, right up the gut. <laughs> no wrestling moves needed there, just some quicks through the hole and a big run on first down for the Argos. All he needs is like a truck horn, honk, honk, coming right up the middle. Look at that, pulling both the big boys right to left. He finds it, cuts behind him, and he's into the secondary, and the secondary guy's gone, oh, no, this is going to hurt. That's a pass. You know what that was? That was a pass. That's a Calaro special in Winnipeg. Yeah. He flipped that thing inside to Dembski. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. Between the tackles. Uh, you know, people watch film. They steal stuff. Oh, they're going to stand around. And nowhere to go. That time, Richard Leonard steps up and made the play. But to, to your point about that, people watch film. Week one, Argonauts didn't play. And Ryan did what he said. We used it as an opportunity to look around the CFL, watch everybody play, and put in some plays that we were kind of backing off in training camp with. Look at the side of this play call sheet. That's just, that's just the backside. That's the secondary stuff. He's looking at the good stuff on the other side. There's just a lot there. And talking to him early in the week, or he, you know, he says, one of our biggest scenarios that we found ourselves in was we had to pair things down. We had to eliminate, 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 which oftentimes coordinators, quarterbacks, offenses have to do. See what he likes here on second and 11. Kelly in the gun, pressure on, receiver falls down. It might have been another catch for DeVaris Daniels if he could have stayed up. Yeah, that's... 
That drive had its issues if you're a Toronto Argonaut fan. One, you don't like to see your young quarterback on his back, people in his face, penalties, slippage. On the football, see what Haggerty put another one out there. 6'5", 225 out of Western Kentucky is John Haggerty. Conference USA. Sends it away, drops it down. Right to the 20-yard line. Gallimore on a 48-yard punt, tries to cut it back. And right there, Dejon Brissett in to finish it off. There's Sean Oakman, a tremendous presence in that Argonauts championship locker room of last season. For more, here's Matthew Chanel. A presence with a saying, a three-strand cord is not easily broken. Sean Oakman heard that from Brian Norwood when he was the defensive coordinator of Baylor over 10 years ago. It became a saying that Enoch Mwamba said every time that Sean Oakman wanted to say something or had nothing else to say, he would say that. It became a quote that really defined the 2022 season for the Toronto Argonauts. Argonauts. For Enoch Mwaba, who designed the ring and didn't tell Sean Oakland that it would be in the ring, he said that, quote, defined offense, defense, special teams. And then when Oakland opened up the ring and saw the quote that he had used all season long, he began to cry because he realized the football things that were important to him were important to his whole team, guys. Fitting punctuation on his championship impact in Toronto because standing on the Toronto Argonauts sideline last year as the field goal was blocked by Robbie Smith, Sean Oakman just walked down the sideline by himself with his arms raised above his head crying. So to see that ring with his impact on it just like it was on this roster. A lot of hard work goes into that. And it's ingrained in there forever now. And his legacy as an Argonaut and his presence here is felt every day and he continues to lead this football team. Well, Levi Mitchell looks over the top for Duke Williams incomplete and the punting unit will have to come out. But for the Sean Oakman story, the, the guy was a tremendous player, obviously, at Baylor, but he was also a meme. Like, he yeah. was absolutely the guy that was standing at midfield that looked like a machine that had the abs popped out at all six foot eight, and right. he didn't want to just be a meme. He wanted to be a football player. He's come to Canada, <laughs> he's got that and, he, and he's turned himself into a tremendous professional football player. Yeah, and thank God for the shotgun and quarterbacks being five yards away from the line of scrimmage now when they receive the football. <laughs> Back in the day, those guys, and there was plenty of them his size, when you're underneath the center, you're pretty excited and motivated to get away from the line of scrimmage as quick as far as you can. And he makes it tough on opponent, opposing quarterback, Sean Oakman. Javon Leak. Yeah, no doubt. Javon Leak returning the punt. Out. The Flags are down. Illegal block. Toronto number 25. Ten yard penalty. First yeah, you know, the lull in the game right here. Brian Kelly often stood on the sidelines with me and says, Manny, you know, what's going on? Let's go out there and take this game, you know, because it's a 16 point game. There's a minute to go in the third quarter, and there's a lot. I mean, both offenses are just kind of going through the motions. Defense is doing what they have to do. And you can go out there and put a drive together. You can go a long way to see on this football game. You've got to recognize that. Nikki Donovan, special teams coordinator, talking to the fourth-round pick of the Argonauts this year. That's Spencer Nichols. See Enoch Mwamba on the yeah. sidelines there to your right. That's Spencer Nichols. Making his way onto the roster after the retirement of Declan Cross, longtime Argonauts fullback. As inside, they try to hand it off to Oleg. Breaks away from one, now two tackles, and can't get away from a third as that Ticats defensive front stacks it up as A.J. Oleg continues to get the bulk of the carries, and Casey Sales at the bottom of the pile for Hamilton. Yeah, I love me some Casey Sales and Winnipeg Blue Bomber for beginning of his career, and he's over here now, and I really think that that's a good addition to the Hamilton Ticats interior. As Ted Laurent, you know, is into his 12th year, and you need to solidify that, and they have with Casey Sales. There's a look at Ted, or Diallo as well. Just heard in the huddle there as they get ready to snap this one up. Chad Kelly tell the huddle, hey, lock in on second and 12. Looking over the middle, checks it down on the crosser and hit as he threw, incomplete, intended for DeMonte Coxey, who was hot in that first half and has had a couple of balls just off the target. And there's that lull you're talking about, Matty, where the uh, offense for Toronto in the first half, that would have been a crosser, a completion, 20 yards after the catch. 24 in hot pursuit. And, you know, if Chad doesn't short arm that, that ball's knocked loose. And Chris Edwards made his presence felt on that. And, and you know, here we go. It's uh, up to Haggerty. Try to 
flip the field a little bit here. As the rush comes, well timed from the Tiger Cats, trying to get the block. History of block punts in these two teams playing each other recently is diving forward, trying to get the no yards call. Is Gallimore has a 43 yard punt, much shorter than they've had in the last couple of exchanges of possession. Uh, at the end of the play, right there, Ten yards. it's Trevor Hoyt out of Carlton. No yards. Toronto number six, 15 yard penalty. Oh. First down. Yeah, oh. They'll end up calling it on a Darius Pickett. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats will have possession with good field position, trailing by 16 points and looking to get some rhythm going here in the fourth and final quarter. O Levi Mitchell, Chad Kelly, quarterbacks at odds, headed to the fourth and final quarter in week number two of the CFL. Control with first downs, passing yardage, and the rushing yards for Hamilton. Uh, I mean, they were good in the first half, but really what we're looking at here is points off turnovers, the two interceptions. That's the story of this ball game. The same thing that happened last week. The Hamilton Tiger Cats lost a turnover yep. battle to Winnipeg, and they're losing that turnover battle to Toronto. It's costing them big time. And we're talking about a lull here, 15 minutes to play. See if Hamilton can't dig deep to find something to get them going. But I'd like to dig deep right now and just simply say to uh, my father, Happy Father's Day, Frank. Absolutely. Yes, you love you. Brian Ferguson out there, Gerald Ferguson, my son Noah Ferguson, proud to be your dad. Yep. And proud to be your son. Absolutely. My son Dolan Dunnigan, my oldest son Dane. Bo Levi Mitchell, the dad in his own right to two beautiful little girls. Living in Hamilton now, pitches it out, and Deontay Knight, former Western Mustang, makes the play. And as you get a look at the Mitchell family and Maddie consoling what looks like a distraught little one. Oh, yeah. Get and Daddy in the end zone. Hey, you know, as the football game going on, as big as the world is in football for this family, going on at the house of 24 that never stops and Madison's doing a great job handling that. Five wide for Bo and he gets it out to Tim White just knocked away that time on the edge is Robertson Daniel there once again to make the play. Closing quickly as that ball hung up a little bit and he got there just in the nick of time to knock it out of Tim White's hands as Bo climbing a ladder pocket there slings it out Kind of floated on him just a little bit. And Daniel's there. Lynn hides that one up, casually drops it down just outside the 10 yard line. As it is a clean block coming from behind that time. And everybody from the Tiger Cats gets there is Demonte Coxey. Tremendous night for him. We'll come back out onto the field and really one of those players that was kind of in the mix for Toronto last year, playing that boundary wide receiver spot. They usually get so many targets, but he's really come to life here in their home opener. Yeah, you know, we've got some big name targets in the Canadian Football League. Pass catches, got great catch radius, can make things happen, big playmakers, and, and uh, but we've got some young up and comers too, and he's one of them. And uh, we, I think we're going to be introduced to a lot of new receivers this year across the league, and that's exciting. We only have three downs to work with. They're going to get their opportunities. And Cokes has certainly had that chance tonight already. Yeah, the OC Mariner in Ottawa looks interesting. Trey Odom's Dukes in Calgary. You got a lot yeah. of big body guys that can run and catch the rock as Kelly stutters his feet, flips it out. This one will go to Curly Gittins Jr. Ah, yes, the old matchup there. Carlton against Wilfred Laurier. Yeah. Tunde Adelike against Curly Gittins Jr. Too, right? He's thinking, man, I don't even get a flat. You know, it's an easy route for you to cover me on, man. I'm a vertical guy. I need the ball going full speed. Two of the best Canadians in the entire CFL saying, you know, this, this looks just like in Mississauga in the offseason. Yeah, it's like, oh, here we go. I got to run east and west. I don't like that. I'm going north and south. <laughs> easy play for a delicate. Well, he's gifted on that back end, using a lot of ways. All kind of pressure movement. here. All kind of movement coming there, second and long. And Hamilton is Mark Washington, defensive coordinator for the Tiger Cats, ready to dial that one up. Everybody's pointing at each other. 
Chad, he's loving it. <laughs> oh, look, you know, you got to have a good time. Procedure, Lock. Toronto number 59. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Any quarterback can smile and laugh at you when you take a procedure penalty. Uh, you know things are going well. John Allen is the one that gets called for it there. Is Mark Washington will make some substitutions. In comes Jagarin Davis last year with these Toronto Argonauts, making 36 tackles and seven sacks, and he's happy to get Jagarin back in, and then they trade for Jonathan Kongbo as well. He's got all sorts of sub packages to work with in his front four here as Kelly takes the snap. Now second and 13 after the procedure penalty. Loads it up. Downfield, it's Coxie. Gives him a chance and draws the pass interference. Yeah, and I don't think that people thought that they have a chance here, but that ball certainly got out there with plenty on it. I think because he had so much on it. He drew a defensive pass interference call. Well, pass interference. Hamilton number 14. Spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. That was, that was a chuck and duck right there. No doubt. Didn't want it, didn't end up where he wanted it to. He got out of his cylinder when he was throwing it for a good reason, because he was fixing to get his take one right in the chops. I liked how Coxie continued to fight for the football and drew the penalty. 43 yards, it flips the field, and Andrew Harris gets a carry. In between the tackles, step up. Hey, that's your number two back right now? <laughs> hey, AJ, take a break. You know, we're going to give it to Andrew a couple series. Yeah, your depth guy is one of the greatest running backs right. in Canadian football history. That's incredible. And they were just incredible last year. Look at these numbers. I'll take 1,500, 1,600 yards in a heartbeat. That's, uh, I'd like to see that zero, you know, with the one in front of it, maybe, and a one in front of that three, <laughs> find the end zone. But in today's day, and as you see, quarterback sneaks are huge yeah. when you're third and goal. Yeah, think about it in the Grey Cup last year as well, when Toronto beating Winnipeg out there in Regina, using Olette, flipping him out of the backfield, getting him into the end zone as Kelly gets hit as he throws, completes it on the crossing road. And Kelly's under a pile of black and gold tacklers, and Dijon Brissett's got the football with a gain and moves the sticks. A tough throw for Kelly complete. Well, he's got to get to that quicker, and he will, and, you know, with time and reps. And, you know, he's just got to get to it, knows where the sticks are, and uh, he, he, he'll get rid of that quick because that gets tiresome taking those hits. Stick it to him right now. You know where the sticks are. Don't wait for anything downfield to happen. Just, you know, they drop, take it underneath, let him move the sticks, and he'll learn that. Looping blitz that time by Jameer Thurman coming over in free agency from the Calgary stand. Peters haven't said his name much tonight as Olette gets chopped down and says, yeah, you got to go low on yeah. me to bring me down, and, don't you? And you know who that was? That was his ex-teammate. Yeah. That was, he went low. Ten tackles last week, good for second in the Canadian Football League. Had 73 in all of 2022. So he is on track to have a career season, and that's what they're banking on after Hamilton decided Javon Santos-Knox could move on and free to see to Ottawa, and Thurman assumes that middle linebacker spot. He stares down Kelly here on second and six over the top and tried to go for the back shoulder on Curly Gittins Jr. And Kelly, frustration coming through here as he's not quite in another, rhythm like he was in the first half. Another teachable, coachable moment right there. But he and his receiver, receiver went inside. He was thinking outside. He'll throw behind, and it wasn't there. To your right of your screen, he's looking right the whole way. He wants to spot it outside and a throw behind. The receiver taking inside release on Leonard, and he and Gittins weren't on the same page, and there's the reaction. He says, I'm having fun. Yes. I remember on this drive, <laughs> there was a procedure call about 60 yards ago, and they moved it pretty well here to flip the field, and that's huge here in the fourth quarter. Hegarty playing the hip direction game well, look at that. with Gallimore. I'm going left, you know, oh, flip back right. to the right. Look at him. Uh, which one? Oh, he's going right. You know what? I'm going to go hard right. He tries to pin Hamilton. Inside the 10, flag comes out behind the play as Gallimore makes the catch. And steps out of bounds, 47 yard punt. You know, these teams, there's heated rivalries, there's relationships, guys in uniforms last year in different uniforms. This is the first of four meetings. Hamilton number 32. Hopkins to the goal, the first down. Very 
is Fraser Sopic gets called for the flag that time is Hamilton has possession trailing by at home I'm calling that Lions Bombers game Matthew Schnetti is going to be in the on the on our in the panel with us as Kate gets a little time off well deserved as that one goes back shoulder and incomplete intended for Terry Godwin but a great slate of games coming up for you plenty of storylines here early on in 2023 yeah. what did you tell me what did you ask me point you made about next week Hamilton at home yeah if Hamilton goes home 0 and 2 and the Tiger Cats fans frustrated in a year where they're hosting the Grey Cup at the end of November, I'd and that, so. that's going to be a powder keg of a Tim Hortons field on Friday night football. Yeah, going to be electric. These fans don't like losing. And it's Bo trying to send a message here with inside 10 minutes remaining. Second and 10 from his own end zone. Dances around the uprights, completes it over the middle. Duke Williams cuts back, and he'll get the first down as Mitchell on his backside. Yeah, I'm not liking that. He's slow to get zone. up. Yeah, pressure is coming, and he, he did a nice job of finding. Yeah, I think it's Mc, uh, McManus right here, and he eventually both flushed him. McManus' side, he just stays out there, and he grabs his left, looks like groin, on his left leg, and gingerly gets up. And yeah, Mitchell's actually going to make his way. Yeah, this is great. I saw it. Right and, uh, now. I used, yeah, I've been there, done that a gazillion times, and I can just tell by the way he's walking, yeah. how it's catching, and got a good side. We'll see Matthew Schiltz, yes. player from Butler, that has lit it up in several occasions and opportunities when he's had to play. Here's another look at him at Manus to the right of your screen, just kind of eyeballing things, making sure the boat didn't escape. Just kind of puts him down. Head athletic therapist Claire Toffelmeyer helps Bo to the sideline. And Matthew Schiltz comes into the ball game. That's not going to go away overnight either. And off inside on first and 10 gets stacked up immediately. As the Argos defense and Corey Mace, their coordinator, were certainly banking on inside run, but Bo walking very slow to the sideline right now. That's not what you want to see if you're a Helen Tiger Cat fan, teammate. Management, the guy that you, the word you used earlier, banked on. You can see him going down there. That's a groin injury, and that's not going away overnight. So, He's 16 of 24 in the ball game, exiting right now with 161 through the air and two interceptions, both thrown in the end zone. Here's Schultz with second and ten from his own 18. Mm. And he Getting goes someone down. With head. That's Robbie. Robbie Smith gets some. Yeah, that guy, every time he's on the field, he makes things happen. Every time he's on the field. Love that kid. Yeah. He's coming right out. He's just second from the end of the top. Cuts underneath. Schiltz, who's got some wheels if he's in space. Couldn't escape Robbie Smith. Of course, one of the heroes of the yeah, he would. Grey Cup last November that they're celebrating here tonight with the replica rings given out to the first 10,000 fans that made their way to BMO Field as we get a look at Robbie Smith. He just makes plays. Former ninth overall pick out of Wilfred Laurier back in the backfield. 22-6 Argos the attempt and the Argonauts are crowned Grey Cup champions. That was going hard left anyways but Smith just made sure. <laughs> Robbie had those magnets on the football. Kicked it right to his hands as A.J. Olette <laughs> bouncing off tacklers down to the 20-yard line. I thought he was going to squirt through there. Well, there's a big hole off the left side. Sitting in the cab goes to Hunter and Cage over there making it happen. See on the deal, little Cam Phillips, 89, working hard for his teammates. Running game's just not about to run it back. Big boys up front, everybody in the secondary. Look, man on man, got the guys walled off. AJ says, thank you, fellas. JB Elliott has had to make a lot of tackles in that secondary tonight from his boundary halfback spot. <laughs> it's not what you want if you are Mark Washington in that Tiger Cats defense. As Olette gets 13 touches in the ballgame, they empty it out three by three. Quick screen goes into the slot and dives. 
diving forward. It's Curly Gittins Jr. gets popped by Jaguar Davis. And Gittins off to a great start here in the home opener. Yeah, he's screaming right in Adelike's ear, too, after that run. Catch and run. Good reaction. But you don't have to get all of them. Just a piece of them. Make Leonard undercut that. He's out of the picture. Then go high. Athletic ability. Absorb the hit. Talk some noise. Three catches, 38 yards for Curly Gittins Jr. here in his first action in 2023. Once again, they'll bump out Olette. Now run him back into the formation as they hand it off inside into the end zone. No touchdowns last year. Andrew Harris gets a major to kick off 2023. Yeah, I love this. Love all, everything about it. The two-back set is alive and well, Matty. That's a 4-1 set right there. Look at this. A.J. in motion, coming back. Oh, my goodness, that's just well-blocked, well-designed, taking full advantage of the flow and the formation, easy read. Andrew Harris, an iconic CFL career. And it ain't over yet. Three plays, 39 yards, and just over 90 seconds is all it took as Toronto extends their lead. Headed down the stretch to the fourth quarter in week number two. Well, you've seen this a time or two. BC, Winnipeg, Toronto. It's 33 for six. Touchdown, Argonauts. here get excited up here watching that stuff and watch how well executed it was in timely fashion as Boris Beatty knocks this one down the field and Hamilton just six points to show as we are at six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter but the selflessness of AJ Olet yeah. and Andrew Harris trading roles back and forth yeah, just I mean these guys just get it man they know it's gonna take two it did last year it's a beautiful thing to watch. Now here, we got one, two, three, four. The fourth man is A.J. Olet. He got Andrew Harris. He's coming back in the backfield this way. And I want you to watch. I want you to watch this man right here, Ted Ron, as he gets taken out by A.J. Bam! He's going up and over. It's a walk-in for Andrew Harris. And there's that team bonding, paying off on the football field. A.J. knows it. He took down 11-year veteran Ted Ron, who's well over 10 pounds. Matthew Schultz remains in the ball game. Hits Tim White in stride this time, and right up near the 55 goes White with his best play of the ball game. That was the 50th career rushing touchdown for Andrew Harris as he extends the lead that White and Schultz are now trying to answer. The pedigree, you know, his leadership, uh, he even being injured last year and working through that support. You can see the love between those two guys. It's a beautiful thing. And Matthew Schultz here, nice dart to Tim and hopefully get this Hamilton Ticat offense rolling here in the fourth quarter. A lot of four receivers to the wide side since Schultz has come in. This time he'll go back to the other side. James Butler on a little screen. And he turns what should have been a loss into a three-yard game for Hamilton. Costigan just coming hard. Turn it back inside, let the posse come and pursue. Costin, Costin got there just for a three-yard gain. It's effort by the defense interior. Everybody working together to limit that play. I'll go quickly here with Schultz in for Bo Levi Mitchell. Again, injured. Looks like a groin, lower body. Grabbed it after getting hit in the fourth quarter. Schultz stands in. Oh, it's Terry Godwin on a crossing route here on second and long. And Godwin can't get to the sticks. This is Sean Amos turned him back inside. And Darius Pickett said, you know, I'm going to get myself a tackle. Why not? Right? You know, you drop nine. And uh, you don't have to get rid of the ball right away. But he did. And then everybody just plays under the, everything underneath and come up and make a play. Third and seven and a half. They're going to go for it. Sadly ironic, I guess, if you're a Tiger Cats fan right now, but Tim White told me this week that the biggest change between last year and this year in this Hamilton Tiger Cats offense, one quarterback. Well, the backup is in right now as they try to mount a charge. Trailing big. Schultz stands in, looks over the top. Duke Williams goes and gets it. 
He's still got that range, the catch radius of Duke Williams on display for the first down. Some of that athletic ability Coach Larry Dolce was talking about. Standing in the pocket, paying the price. Not a pretty ball, but a catchable one. Duke goes and grabs it, snags it, snares it. Whoop! Oh, my goodness. That's fearlessness, folks. That's the hit from Jordan Jordan Williams as well. Middle linebacker here in Toronto. I haven't told his story much as another completion up to the wide side that time. And Schultz is five for five. This is basically where Schultz picked up when he was playing the Eastern semifinal, replacing Dane Evans based on performance yeah. in that playoff game in Montreal. He's got the moving down the field. Three minute warning here in Toronto. Schiltz and the Tiger Cats off. Elgin Knight for the Hamilton Tiger Cats just got worse because Bo Levi Mitchell is out. You see him getting hit there in the Hamilton end zone. He walked off holding the quad and hamstring area of his left leg, kneeled down, went into the medical tent, was brought ice, walked to the locker room with ice in his pants, wrapped around his quad. That will now be the big question besides the scoreline post game, guys. Thank you, Matthew. And Certainly Hamilton with their home opener coming up this coming Friday, hoping to see him back in the lineup. As Matthew Schultz at the controls, hands it off on second and short. Hamilton doesn't get the first down. And Schultz and the offense will stay on the field here, trailing big late in the fourth. Trying to get something going. Yeah. Make no mistake about it, these are all yabs that we're seeing from Matthew Schultz, but it's good reps for him and live play. And so help him potentially for next week's start. For the uninitiated, Yabs. Yards after beat down. Anything uh, 17 teams up by 17 or points, 17 points or more, and you start your knife in the ball on or you know, because they're playing zone, and they're all yards after beat down. And that's what we're looking at here on this drive. But, you know, you, you take what they give you, and that's what Matthew Schiltz has done. And Schultz Takes up a first down. Digs in and dives his way forward. Gets a fresh set of downs to be able to play with. 15,967, the announced attendance here in Toronto on Grey Cup Championship Celebration Night, 150th anniversary of Argonauts football celebration kickoff. Right, and they, and they mentioned two more players going to the Ring of Honor for the Toronto Argonauts, and that's Mookie and, uh, and Damon. And these guys were absolutely phenoms. I think they're two tremendous choices to go into that elusive group for the Toronto Argonauts. Glorious history. Absolutely. Uh, incomplete for the first time for Matthew Schultz that time on the corner road looking for Tim White in the end zone. Mitchell and Allen just I, I heard that and I called Damon and congratulated him and I'm just so happy for him because I think it's just two perfect selections. Two Hall of Famers that just lit it up as Art knows. And Damon was doing it when he was like 60. You know? <laughs> 23 years, folks. Pretty good career. Blitz on from the Argonauts. Pass completed to Tim White. And Robertson Daniel coming downhill quickly there to make the tackle. Yeah. Expect the offense to stay out for the remainder of the possession. That's right. Matthew Shields got a lot of playing time last year. Sees the field well. Athletic. It's quick. Ticats fans are well versed with seeing him out there. Can't go. He's certainly capable. Empty it out for Schultz here on third down and two. Zips it in between Argo's tacklers and Tim White makes the grab. Winton McManus makes yet another tackle here on the evening. As they will get the first down and wins, nice throw. wins a little slow to get onto his nice feet as well. Winton McManus last season. One of my favorite players across the entire CFL because he, an American guy who comes up, earns it on special teams, gets a chance to play as a starter at weak side linebacker, but still contributes all over the place okay. on special teams as he okay. pops up onto his feet and drops back to the line. That's a huge sign for Argo fans. Ryan almost knocks over Ryan Dinwiddie on the way back to the bench. He wants to hit somebody. Last year he had 88 tackles on defense, seven on special teams. That's 10% of Toronto's entire team tackles. Good for sixth in the CFL, and he didn't even finish the year. How many games? He, he missed played, a big right? chunk yeah. of games due to injuries, and he was know? still sixth in total team tackle percentage. Well, he was leading the league at one point, and then he went down. 
Shelton got surpassed, but he was having a tremendous year. Where he could have the back healthy. Schultz looking downfield, fades it to the back of the end zone, trying to keep a toe down. Yeah! Tyler Ternowski. Yes. Oh, look at it. Where's Tim going to give him some love? Get on over there. Yeah, he's going to give him some love. As the Tiger Cats fans get a chance to celebrate their second touchdown of the evening, albeit spotted extremely well by Matthew Shales. Look at the toe. Tap dancing from Ternowski. Nice. Didn't have to do the... Just need one, of course, for our viewers on CBS Sports Network. You get a picture of that, blow it up, <laughs> you're set for life. Tyler Tarnowski, congratulations. Nice catch, my man. Something to build on for next week. Going for two. We'll go for two here, yep. 11 plays, 84 yards in three and a half minutes. As the former 27th overall pick out of Waterloo. There's two targets, two catches last week. It's on the stat sheet here. Gets a touchdown in 2023. They'll go back to the well. Why not? Feed him while he's hot. 88. Making a couple of grabs. That's the old Xerox. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, rewind. Until right back make to the it well. up, right? 12. Tim White, first one over there to congratulate Tyler Tanowski after a little brawl or a little yeah, misunderstanding earlier in the ball game. But boy, that's good to see. In there. Oh, that's a touchdown grab. Two point convert. It's a little fade route. Uh, just another look at the touchdown grab. There's a two point convert. That's a fade all day. McFadden caught sleeping. <laughs> what, the the yeah. former top defensive back in all of the NCAA. The kid, the kid from Waterloo. Right, no, but you know that's, that's the beauty of this <laughs> that's game. The CFL, man. That is that is exactly it there, and uh, you, you can't fall asleep because these guys will hurt you. Anybody can. And Turnowski just showed that beautiful touchdown catch, two point convert, little fade route right over the top of the fat. That's not going to be a fun moment tomorrow in film study. Tell you what, Tyler Turnowski, Waterloo Warriors alum out here making plays. You got to wonder with the quarterbacking situation in Edmonton whether or not his former quarterback at Waterloo, Trey Ford, will get a look for the Elks and their oh, offenses. Man, Hamilton lines up. Fuel on the fire. Lines up the onside kick, easily recovered by Toronto in the hands team as Curly Gittins Jr. decides to add a couple of extra yards to his okay. combined yardage totals on the season. Okay, as you going to let me talk about that? And now Hamilton, Toronto breaks out for just a half a second. You're not going to let me talk about that. <laughs> go, go ahead, because last night you were there, 22-0. Hey, nothing against Trey Ford, but I, just, I don't see it as a Taylor Cornelius problem. I don't. I, I think the kid's very capable of leading an offense in this in this league and doing extremely well. They just hadn't put it together yet for a number of reasons. I keep a lot of that to myself. But so I don't want to throw anybody on the bus, but it's certainly not going to be Taylor Cornelius. There's the frustration you see from Jeff Reinbold there. So he wanted to come back and coach the CFL. As outside, using the wheels, it's Chad Kelly. And he takes a big hit you down around that side. That late the okay. As the QB keeper. And Kelly told me this week he's happiest when he's just on a football field with a helmet on, shoulder pads, and playing the game. I don't think he really cares about time score situation. <laughs> well, of course he doesn't, because he wants to he wants to be the guy, but he don't want to be taking hits like that. We'll see Brian Scott in a heartbeat. They're playing for real out there. There's still a minute 45 and a clock. Brian Scott's just going, yeah, let put me in, coach. Let me get some PT. It's a backup quarterback. Reminiscent of McLeod Bethel Thompson refusing to come out of games last year regardless of well, come on, score and time when Chad Kelly gets some Occidental College going here with some Brian Scott. Uh-oh. J. Olet, first and ten, grinds it between the tackles. How about that? The two backup quarterbacks for the Toronto Argonauts. One's from Occidental College, the other's from Lindsey Wilson College. Yeah. What do you got for me on Lindsey Wilson? Yeah, right? Yeah, she was a girl I used to date in high school. Oh, come on. I, it, it's like, my point is, in the Canadian football, we find quarterbacks all over. Mm -hmm. We will find you and bring you up here and let you adapt to this 
this wonderful game because it is different, different than what they play down there in the States. I played it down there, I played it up here, and I just absolutely love this game because it challenges the quarterback. And Warren Moon once told me, this game will ask more of you than any other because you only have two downs to work with, second and long, you just can't spike, rifle it away and call another play. you got to pull it down and make something happen. So you got a different skill set. We saw, we've seen from Chad Kelly tonight his skill set, and it certainly fits this game extremely well. The strong arm, he saw the field extremely well, made some good decisions. We saw him almost make some bad ones and pull it down and make good plays. We've seen his legs. It's been a special night for this young man. Harris and Olette back in the game, just like they were on the Harris rushing touchdown earlier. In between the tackles again, they give Olette the fullback role, if you will. As he tries to dig out the interior of that Hamilton defensive line. How about a healthy, fresh Andrew Harris coming downhill at you with one minute left in the pocket? That's just crazy. As he checks out after a gain of four. And a rebel right put uh, Curly Gittins Jr. in the slot here. Hard count. Is Kelly trying to freeze it? He's just trying to jump. And he won't snap the football. Timeout. Toronto. A little field goal action here. Put three more on the board. And Toronto will travel to Edmonton to take on the Elks and Hamilton going home for Friday Night Football in week three. Yeah, put as many on the board as you can, right? Yep. Play this team three more times. up tied total points comes into play right it's amazing the difference that a year can make when you see chad kelly smiling on the sidelines there yes with chris sweet on the sideline and mike miller of course quarterback's coach and it was right around this time early last year as flags come up likely a procedure call here but it's around this time last year toronto went out to bc and took on the nathan Rourke revolution in vancouver and on the sideline, Bo Lever, it was McLeod Bethel Thompson refusing to come out of the ball game. Number 93. How does that happen? And How does he even have a say in that? And it was Ryan Dinwiddie getting into it a little bit with McLeod Bethel Thompson, the frustration on the sideline in the blowout. And Chad Kelly was just saying, hey, I, I just want some reps. And he got in, and here we are a year later. He's the leading man in a... That's why I was saying the same thing about getting Brian Scott in there. Yeah. Just get him some PT. It's valuable. Just to call plays, even short yardage. And as Boris Beattie hammers this one through to make it a 32-14 advantage as Argos fans enjoying themselves here at BMO Field on the Lake Shore with the Grey Cup Champions banner. In attendance, ready to be added to the tally alongside 2012 and 2017, which, interestingly enough, some uh, history there between Bo Levi and Mitchell, of course, and the Toronto Argonauts and his time in Calgary. And yeah. those, then those you, go, cups. you go Damon, 2004, right? And that Damon? Yeah. And then you go Flutie in 96, yeah. 97. I know who was in 91. Yeah. That's pretty good stuff right Standing there. next to me. Yeah, I had a lot of help from Ricky Foggy that year and teammates. We were loaded that year. But Flutie in 96, 97 was incredible. Damon, who's like 60 in 2004. Ricky in 12. Just, just crazy. And I got a feeling the Bo Levi Mitchell story against these Toronto Argonauts isn't done. Of course, this just an early season taste of what Labor Day will be. And maybe even a playoff date months away. But Toronto unquestionably wins round one as downfield sliding. It's Gallimore taken to the turf by Eric Sutton. Gallimore's had a good night tonight. You know, he's shown me a lot. Uh, he's, he's done an admirable job in the place of, of Woods, who's out of field side corner returner. Look at A.J. Olette. There's Gallimore there. Well, that looks like it's pregame. Oh, he's, he's, he's too yoked. He's going to go home. He's, he'll probably go to the gym and work out tonight. 
He's got that look in his eyes like he, he just took the smelling salts and it's almost kickoff. Yeah. The second in, round, baby. We're Same inside. Thing, let's go. Final minute of the fourth quarter. Schultz gets it out. James Butler adding to his touch tally on the night. Is yeah, he certainly played a central role in the attack? And he should. He will for their success and their turnaround. Starting 0-2 is not what they anticipated, but long way to go, and he's going to be a big part of it. Marshall, I appreciate the help tonight. I didn't think I'd make it. I was worried. Look, the flights got canceled last night after the BC game, and if I was going to be able to get here, didn't have to call Dwayne Ford off the bench. You know, he's with his kids. And, Good on him. Glad he could stay there and enjoy the evening. Happy to do it here with you, Marshall. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Great to be in the booth once again with you here, Matty, as we round out week two of the CFL season. And looking forward to some great games coming up, not just week three, but moving into Canada Day weekend yeah. as well. Yeah. Got a chance to talk to my wife today on the way over. Both Kathy and my daughter Madison called. Polly in the picture, granddaughter, wishing me happy Father's Day, made my day. And again, all the fathers out there, hope it's a good one for you. I have received confirmation that one Noah Ferguson has successfully been put down to bed. Uh, that's not, always, not by Grandma. That's always by like Grandpa. A win. That's a, <laughs> on Father's Day, yeah, yeah, Grandpa yeah, yeah. took on yeah, putting yeah, yeah, little yeah. Noah down to bed. So I, I am a thankful father on this Father's Day. Yeah. Does he sleep through the night? Tremendous. Yeah. Nice. Matthew Schiltz pumps. I can zips it back oh. to the field. James Butler left all alone. Uh -oh. Makes two men miss. Now a third. And finally, uh -oh. Uh -oh. popping them down. Argo players cramp. Uh, oh, that's just a cramp. And then Tavares McFadden into it with Keandre Smith. Yeah, I thought Toronto did everything they wanted to do tonight. Unveil their banner and, and put it in, in Hamilton's face while they did it. And it was tastefully done. I like what Pinball had to say. We're going to make a good attempt at capturing another one in 2023. And to start it, off, start it off this way in front of this crowd, I thought it was extremely positive. And this team looks strong in all facets. Schultz steps up in the pocket. He'll just slide down in the final play of the ball game. Hamilton begins their season 0-2 with losses in Winnipeg and here in Toronto. And the Argonauts begin 2023 in their Grey Cup title defense with a 32-14 victory in the debut of Chad Kelly. As Toronto's offense and energy reinvigorated, I have to thank his family who came here with the tickets tonight. Happy, happy people has added motivation for the Tiger Cats to try and stomp out the championship celebration of their QEW rivals, and it fails. The Hamilton Tiger Cats lose Bo Levi Mitchell to injury in the fourth quarter. But Chad Kelly spreading the ball around in the first half. Three rushing touchdowns. And the Argos take round one against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Thanks so much for tuning in. Happy Father's Day, everyone. From Matt Dunnigan, I'm Marshall Ferguson. Time now for SportsCenter with Mark.